lady man for a while she's been tearing up the game all over the place from fashion to um then you had your own modeling agency at one point mm -hmm. then um, how you doing it over in the skincare so this is a blessing to for me to have this platform to be having like friends and new newcomers come on board and but mostly like you know reaching out to my friends to you know give them a chance to talk about you know their journey and where they've been and where they at now so you know. yeah well you know you're always doing something dope and creative <laughs> and like you said we've been friends for probably like almost 10 years now i know right <laughs> like if you really count back <laughs> um, so it's definitely been some time and we've definitely you know watched each other grow and I see your grind, you see my grind, and, you know, we've always supported each other. Um, yeah, 100%. Throughout our different um, projects and just throughout the years. So even this, what you're doing now is, like, dope. I would never – I love to talk, but I would never do, like, a podcast or any type of series. So big ups to you, and thank you for having me. Uh, thank you. So, um, I mean, I know – what I know. So once you share to all the viewers that's going to be checking us out, like, you know, talk about yourself, your journey and everything that you got going on. Yeah. So uh, my name is Erica. Um, I reside in Los Angeles and I'm originally from um, South Orange County. That's where I, I grew up at. Um, currently I'm a, a licensed esthetician and beauty professional. I have my own uh, skincare studio in West Hollywood, where I focus on customized facials, corrective skincare, uh, age prevention. Um, I like to use all botanical and fruit-based uh, formulas in my treatments. So everything always smells really good and yummy. Um, I've been in the industry going on about six, six years right now. Um, and I'm, I'm just now starting to see the, um, all the hard work and the dedication starting to finally, you know, pay off, which feels really good because um, everything takes time and, you know, hard work and dedication. So definitely been those times where I just probably couldn't see the end, but Right now, um, I work also full time for a professional uh, uh, skincare company um, in Hollywood, California, and, and there I'm the lead esthetician. Um, so that's been something that I, I always wanted to do. I wanted to get my experience and my career, and you know, become an expert in skincare and, and work for um, some of the top brands. So that's been really exciting and. Um, also, I run a, a really small e-commerce online that uh, sells professional skincare products, um, which is really awesome because they are all um, recommended from me and, you know, my expertise. And um, they're also products that you won't be able to find at CVS or on Amazon. Um, they're you know, exclusively only available through spas and estheticians. So that's kind of like the unique thing about my website. Um, you know, you can, you can go anywhere and buy things, but if I can sell it and your friends can sell it, then why not support them, you know? So really excited about that, um, my e-commerce business. And that's a whole nother just hustle in itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Um, I love skincare. Like helping people, um, just the beauty industry, period, um, making people feel better about themselves and inspiring them to be the best version of themselves is, is my mission and my goal. And, you know, it's more than just touching skin. Um, friendships and relationships develop. Um, you know, all of my clients and friends are intelligent, go-getters, entrepreneurs too. So we get to collaborate off of ideas and motivate and inspire um, each other. So there's a lot more fulfillment that comes with, you know, touching someone's skin and, and, and working in the beauty industry. It's also kind of becomes like a, a lifestyle. And 
become like who you are, you know, like I, I am representation. I I wouldn't want beauty to be behind me and it, and I'm ugly, you know, so it definitely has uh, changed me like in a lot of ways too um, as my career has grown, but that's my passion and that's what I love to do and just share scents and products and formulas with people and just pamper people in the comfort of their own home. Basically. <laughs> that's dope. Um, as far as the industry that you're in now, like how did it come about? Like how did it draw you in to say this is the area I want I want to put 110 percent in and, and make it happen how did you go about doing it you know I always get asked that and it's a really funny story um I met someone that uh noticed how much I like to pamper myself um when it comes to like beauty products and bath products and perfumes and cosmetics in general and they were like, hey, you should go to school to be um, an esthetician. And at that time in my life, I was like in my late 20s, um, I was in transition and I was really trying to figure out, okay, I'm not getting any younger, I'm only getting older, like what am I gonna do? So they threw the idea at me and, you know, I've always got facials my whole life since I was a little girl, um, like in nail salons. And I was like, I can never do that. Like, I'm not going to be responsible for um, someone's face. Yeah. So they brought it up again. I kind of ignored it. And they brought it up again. And then, But this time, they kind of came with me with some incentives. And I was like, oh, yeah, whatever. Okay. But I was like, I'll look into it. I'll look into it. So then I looked into it. And that was it. You know, I went to Marinello. And... I really, I, 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 I feel at that moment, it wasn't really something that I was doing for myself, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I instantly, you know, loved it. Um, I instantly gravitated to it. Um, I wanted to learn more about skin. I wanted to be able to be informative. And I wanted to gain as much knowledge as I can so that I could be the best esthetician that I could you know um I loved it like it just came natural to me and you know I wish that I would have found this out sooner about myself but it just kind of goes back to the, the point that we always say that it's never too late to start you know a new career or it's never too late to follow your your dreams right um yeah. Because, I mean, that's my testimony. That's exactly what happened to me. So that's how I got into skincare. And, you know, I, I, I'm the type of person, I love to be hands-on and I love to participate and volunteer. So, you know, when you're going to beauty schools, there is a lot of opportunities for that. So I really took advantage of that um, while being a student, which I, I think kind of helped accelerate my career to where it's at now. Um, and it just, it just, you know, made my passion and my love for the industry grow. And it's something so easy to talk about, you know, beauty, whether it's makeup or whether it's, oh, did you smell that new scent? Or have you tried this? Or how oh, I have this beautiful oil, you know, it's so much fun to talk about. And it's so exciting. Um, and the most rewarding thing to me, of course, is people feeling better about themselves, you know. Um, our faith is the first thing that people see, mm -hmm. um, and you know, beauty is, is 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 skin deep, and it you know it starts from the inside. But you also want to. It's important to feel good about yourself um, from the outside. So that's the most rewarding part of you know what I do is when I have my clients come back to me and they're like, wow, like. I've been using these products and I love them. Like they've helped whatever their concern is or, you know, when we're delivering those results and when their skin is proving and when they're feeling more confident in themselves because I can see it as well. You know, it's not just, you know, I see it as far as looking at their skin, but I see it from within, right. with, with them, you know? 
So to be able to have something to do with someone else's confidence, which I wouldn't consider myself to be, um, you know, I'm not a motivational speaker. I don't, I don't, you know, we all have our own insecurities, you know, but for me to be able to do something that I love and it impacts someone's life for the rest of their life, because they're feeling more confident about themselves. Um, that's what really keeps me dedicated to remaining professional and keeps me dedicated to, um, you know, my education and, and just staying current and innovative and, and, and professional. Like, I love what I do. Um, and in my industry, it's all about building trust. You know, yeah. for me, yeah. um, just like, you know, cutting hair. Yeah. Like, if you mess up a dude's lineup, he's going to talk about you. Like, don't go to bro, don't go to that barber. Like, look what he did to my hair. Exactly. You know, so we have to build trust with people based off of our skill, based off of our professionalism, based off of our our uh, sanitation too. Mm. You know what I mean? Everything because we're we're touching tools and implements and hair and uh, things with bacteria and contaminated tools and all of these things. So we have a duty to you know to uh, do that and. And in the beauty industry, that's what it's all about. It's about, you know, gaining someone's trust, um, which to me, that's a very important principle. And uh, it, it, that takes work, work in itself as well, right? Correct. Man, you know, um, this is dope to really have to sit down with you and really um, have these conversations to really help someone that's also maybe in a... Um, are deciding to join in this field and this wonder and like, you know, are they taking the right steps? What steps they need to take? Um, you know, kind of question themselves. What, like you said, you, you was in one situation and, and it led to now where you at now and it's never too late to start a new career path or something that you thought about before, but kind of questioned it. But then now you at this point where like you, you full on with it and you love it. So did right. you, Kind of talk about that, like maybe that if factor when you was at that point where you was kind of saying like, is this the, the best journey that I need to take for myself? Did you did you have that if factor or maybe you just knew once you had the conversation with that person, it was like, OK, it's time for me to do this. Well, I haven't always been this fortunate to love what I do. Um, we've all had that job that we've had to get up every day and go to and we're, we hated it and we were unhappy and because I mean I didn't know that once I got into this I mean I love spending my money on beauty products and cosmetics yeah. that always made me happy you know sometimes I would just go buy a simple lipstick and that would make me feel good you know and be like oh I got a new you know pretty lipstick and, and that's why it's so powerful, right? It's like the little things that we can do to make ourselves feel good. So I didn't know that I would love what I do. And once I got in, into a position and I found something that I loved what I do, then I was like, wow, like it's important to love what you do, you know, um, and, and, and like what you do and enjoy it. Otherwise, you're going to give up. You're going to get tired. You're not going to, you know, be interested. You're not going to have that passion. You're not going to have that obsession. And so I think that first you need to, you know, we all have talents. Mm -hmm. And I'm a huge believer in faith and in, in, in God. And I believe that, you know, when we do, when we use our gifts and we use our talents, um, then, you know, the rest is already done. It's going to be taken care of. And, but on the same token, everything is not for everyone. You know what I mean? Like, just because they gave you some scissors or clippers does not mean that you know how to cut hair. Just because I got... I passed my test, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm good at what I do, you know? So I think that, you know, you have to, 
identify like what are you good at and you know you always have to set realistic goals you know i find it really funny when people because i am an entrepreneur and because i am um i'm you know very tedious i go after things and I, um, I always think of different, different, different ways when, when I hear people say, oh, I want to be a fashion designer, Uh but they don't have a sketch. You don't have a laptop. You're not subscribed to Vogue and all of the runway magazines. Like, what do you mean you want to be a fashion designer, but you don't even have, you're not even sketchy. Like, you know, from the smallest details to the biggest details. Yep. So, so that's what I mean when I say you have to be realistic. You have to be realistic when you're looking at your plan. Every life works on a plan. Goals work on a plan. You don't just go to the gym and lose 200 pounds. What do you have to do? You have to make lifestyle changes. You have to be consistent. You, it's going to go up and down. Some days you're not going to want to, you're not going to want to go run five miles. Just like some days you might not want to invest in your education if you're going to school or just like some days, you know, if you're running your, your own business, you're not going to, you're not going to want to deliver that excellent customer service and reach out to your client and see how they're doing. You know, we, we all feel like that, but the key is you have to, you know, get through it. So it's really, you know, when there's a lot of people that think like that and it's like, okay, what's next? So you see your gift, but then you have to apply it. So once you figure out your gifts and once you're doing, do, you know, doing, using those gifts, then you really love what you do because you're aligned with what, you're good at because we all have our like our own unique talents and just because you do one thing one way it doesn't mean that i need to operate that way or that what worked for you is not going to work for me you know there is a lot of money to be made out here there are a, i don't know how many people that live in la county themselves everyone you know is unique in their own individual you know what i mean People like their own thing. So, you know, what one person might not like, another person, you know, might like. You know, you, you, someone might like your fashion and the next person may not. That That's doesn't mean that you stop. So I believe that once you, you know, come in alignment with, you know, who you are and what you want to do, then it becomes more natural, you know. So what I do is natural. I'm exhausted. Like, I'm always tired because, you know, I'm a hard worker and I have, you know, uh, you know, this, 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 we might go into this, but, you know, I, I always tell my friends in their business, and this is a challenge and it's kind of hard to do. So, you know, if you're a barber, you know, write down five ways that you can make money from being a barber. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like right, next conversation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I'll, I'm always having things going on, but it, it's natural and I love what I do. And which makes the biggest difference. You know, don't settle for less, you know. Um, you know, for example, like I wanted to, I wanted to, as I became an esthetician, I, I wanted to get into dermatology. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if anyone is aware of, how long that will take Uh realistically Uh it will take me eight plus years yeah so it's and i knew i I would be a good dermatologist but then i sat back and i'm like do i have time for that do i have the money for that do i have am i in the space for that am i in the space to commit to medical school You know, I looked at all of these. Now, it's not a matter that I can't do it, but I looked at if I were to do it right now, would I win or fail? And honestly, I tried it. 
I enrolled in school. No, you know what I did? I said, I'm going to go get my R in. I'm going to go get my R in. Um, and then I had to change your heart. But I, I, I say that to just give you like an example, you know, like it wasn't that I was doubting myself. I just felt like I could not be fully committed to, you know, the investment financially, um, the, the commitment into my education. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I probably was like, yeah, I'm just gonna focus on entrepreneur on entrepreneurship. I'm not about to do that. Like I, I can I can become a millionaire, you know. I started doing that, but you know, so you know, no one can tell you uh, what you know. No one can tell you how to live your life and how to be successful. You know, people can give you tools. I mean, and share ideas and they can give you you know their experience and their feedback but ultimately the ball is in your own court like there shouldn't be any you know outside distractions um as far as to why you can't do what you what you want to do but i think that it's so important to keep it real with yourself and be honest with yourself you know and say like hey like I'm, 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 I'm not doing so good. I'm messing up right now. I'm neglecting the project. I'm, I'm neglecting my business that I have this vision for because I know that we all do it. I know that you have probably fell off on your design all the years that you've been doing it. You're like, wow, like a whole month went by and like, it just naturally happened oh, in know. entrepreneurship. Yeah, you get in those rounds where you got so much going on that where, you know, you start, like honestly, like have like an outer <laughs> outer experience where you just like all over the place, and it comes to a point where you need to kind of reflect and sit down and say, okay, what got me here in the first place? What made me decide to do this? And you know that that when you're first doing it, it just like you just have so much joy and you see something that you love, you just all in. But then when you come to that point where you start realizing that, okay, now this is a business. I need to be more business orientated and start, like you said, sit down, write everything out, pinpoint where you want to be, start seeing yourself in the next two to three years of where you want to be. And yeah, for me, I, I did a lot of stuff on my own. So I had to kind of like divide myself a lot because I had to learn the business side. I had to learn the creative side. I had to learn how to network. I had to learn how, then when social media came into play, I had to learn how to deal with social media. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. And you know, and, and it, like, those are all the things that, you know, they, they take time. And um, I just lost my train of thought, what I was going to say and, and, and in regards to something that you said, but yeah, so I know that we all, you know, get sidetracked or sometimes just tired. Like, social media is exhausting. Like, I suck at it. Sometimes I'll be on a roll. I'll have a whole month planned out of, like, content. And then November comes, and I'm like, I don't even want to do all Like, I don't even like social media. You know, things like that. But, again, like, you want this business, and this is who you want to be. This is what... I don't think, I mean, I, if you can show me an example, even, and, and this is what entrepreneurs, what we have to remember, running a business is hard to get started. When you, it's hard to make money to where you, you can survive off your business, unless you just have a booming right off the bat. You know what I mean? But even those people, you know, every business starts off broke Correct. with no money. And so getting through those, um, those, uh, you know, those roadblocks and those challenges, right? Getting through that and continuing to believe in yourself, you know? Um, I started with, you know, nothing. You know, I started, um, actually I got like, um, I started doing facials in my house and I couldn't afford to invest in my back bar and I got my essentials. And I moved from my house to a studio to getting a full back bar. And, you know, I started it literally investing a hundred dollars. And I work in a, 
technology-driven business. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, you know, it sounds impossible, but it's not. Like nothing is impossible. Mm-hmm. Um, so you just have to always, you know, if you if 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 you wanted whatever your goals are, and you know, and and your goals and your fulfillment, you know, when when you're operating a business, it should benefit you, your consumer, and um, you know, it should benefit others. Yeah. You know, somehow, some way, it should benefit the the community. It should benefit. Um, you know something it it, it it should help other people as well so when we're setting up our businesses you know i think that that's another another pre-step that you can take is what do i want from this exactly. of course we want money yeah yeah but at the end so, of but you want to it be takes right. money to make money you're only going to get money if you're you know if uh you have something that people want if you don't have anything people want, then they're not going to spend their money on it. But I think setting up those expectations and, you know, keeping it real with yourself and knowing who you are, you know, how are you going to get, how do you want to, how do you want to podcast, but you don't like, you're shy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Now, if we're going to work on you coming out your shell and being more interpersonal, then I could see you having a podcast. But um, yeah, so you just have to set up those realistic expectations. And once you start building that, then I think you will naturally get this like realm of like, and what I always say, fulfillment, right? And you're gonna, you know, feel fulfilled. Like, hey, I may not, I may not, my skincare brand may not be in Nordstrom's, or it may not be inside Sephora, but I launched it. And this is what I always wanted to do. Uh-huh. I always wanted to launch my own cleanser and I did it and I am ecstatic about it. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Exactly, yeah. And you might just have that small business. You might just have this. And that's one thing that I had to accept. As I was building my career, I would, in the beginning, I started off and I was like looking at all the celebrity estheticians and ooh, and, and you know what I mean? And I think especially in our industry, like people have this, um, I'm going to come out, I'm going to have a salon in Beverly Hills, or I'm going to come out and I'm going to, you know, it's like, yeah, you in every other, however many thousand licensees there are in the state probably wanted to have a beautiful marble salon in Beverly Hills. Okay. Yeah, we know. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't really have that mindset because I'm more of a leader, I'm not really a follower. But as my clientele started to uh, grow, I started to get this fulfillment. Not because I'm like, oh, people are coming, but I started picturing the type of professional, the type of esthetician that I'm going to be. And I was like, wow, I like that people refer me who cares about social media all my people are coming from someone telling someone Uh and it allows me to get to know my clients one-on-one really pay attention to them you know grow with them build that trust so my my focus started shifting and then again because i work full time in our in, in in the industry you know so I was like, I really like this. I like having my Saturdays booked because someone told a friend and, you know, all of this referrals and word of mouth. I like being this intimate practice and small and, you know, their esthetician or when they talk my esthetician and, you know, and, and they can say she, she's good and professional and knowledgeable and really helped me with my skin. Versus like working in this large spa and being like totally known. If that happens, it happens. But the fulfillment already started to come. I got you. You You understand what I'm saying? When when I think that we all start, and and I'm not saying you always dream big. You always want the best for yourself. 
you always, you know, think the impossible. And, and like I said, there's nothing that we can't do. But I think that success is based off of, off of your mindset. And that's how you will be fulfilled and keep that motivation in your business. Um, you know, doing the little things, you know, um, like, man, I swear, I couldn't tell you guys how bad I wanted a website. I didn't have a website for a really long time. Um, and I felt like it was a handicapping. And the reason why I didn't have a website is I never really had the extra money to spend on it. I was like, man, I got to keep this money for something else. And then Square launched its website, mm -hmm. which I was already using Square. Boom, you know, I got the website and I was like, yo, this is dope, finally. And it's doing exactly what I needed it to do for now. Again, I'm going to go and have, you know, a dope web designer come and get it exactly how I want. But right now I had to get it set up for three things, visibility to myself and my business. And so that my clients can book, which brings in my revenue. And so that I can retail my products, which brings in my revenue. Right. I wasn't worried about, I don't want it to be flash play, player and I didn't want like snowflakes coming out the sky. I, I didn't have money for all that. I'm a small business. I'm, I'm using my own money to do this. And I mean, you don't start make you don't, I don't know if you look at like statistics, businesses don't really make money their first year. Like it's not how it works, you know, it's not how it works, everyone. It's not how it works. Um, a sale isn't money. Like it is money, but it's not your money. Yeah, you just put. You're you're putting, yeah, if you're putting so like you know like and then and then you know in in my business I work wholesale, so it's like yeah we get wholesale we sell at retail you're just making your wholesale back you know there's a lot of a lot of different uh, factors that you have to look at that and I feel like all of those things will make someone feel like giving up. Yeah. Because it takes time. And then one day overnight, you're going to be like, whoa, this is like kind of working. Mm -hmm. Like, wait a minute. And you're going to see all of your hard work. And you're going to, I mean, even if it's not, like I said, like, let's take money out of it. You know, like, I measured my success because if I, if I based it off money, then we'll never be satisfied. I like that. You'll never be satisfied. If you're only basing it, like you're going to always say it's not enough money. And I'm going to keep it real with you. In the beginning of my career and building it, I was going to, I was slaving for years, not slaving. I was working hard for years to pay my booth rent. And sometimes I would have extra leftover money. Uh -huh. The people that were coming, I was building my clientele uh -huh. for years to where it got on a reoccurring schedule. Because in our business, we work on appointments, reoccurring. Right. Their hair grows out, they come back into every week. Yeah. That's how we make our money. So I was working so long for years and I mean, sorry, I'm not, you know, yeah, another like myth, like you don't just come out of, you know, cosmetology school or um, especially skin because you're touching people's skin. Again, trust. And you don't just have 50 clients at your door. You don't just go work somewhere and they bring you 50 clients, you know? So I was exhausted. I was like, man, maybe I should not have done this. I was like, I'm, ne I'm always going to be struggling. There's no money in skincare. And in my business, uh, the, the, the statistic rate, the success rates are very low because of these challenges. Building your clientele, the investment in the equipment, in the back bar, you know, all of the assets that it takes to get up and running and, and people saying, I don't have the money to do it because you can't. Um, so I was broke, you know, I, if I couldn't even, the minute that I looked at my monthly sales 
I'm like, oh, all the appointments I did just pay my booth rent, which is expensive because real estate, you know, nothing's free, right? So it didn't, it was, it took years until I started seeing profit, real profit. I was making money, but it wasn't mine. I had to pay for my space. I had to pay for the space so that I can keep the dream going and the vision, right? So that I could, so that I could continue to retain clients and, you know, be referred. I needed a place to work, but I knew that I knew that I was good. I knew that I loved what I do, um, and I measured my success because even though I still wasn't making that moolah, that profit, but I measured my success off of okay. Um, September, I had, you know, eight clients, because that's how it started. I started off with eight clients a month, when I can be doing eight clients a day. In a real setting, that's how much you do. So just to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about, of no, I was just doing it to keep my name and to build my expertise, right? Um, so I would measure my success based off of, I'm like, okay, I had eight clients this month. Of the eight, one was new. That's a win because that one new client is going to become long term, right? We're going to build a relationship. Um, I would measure it off of um, okay, I didn't have any website sales, but four people looked at my website. People are looking. I would measure it. Off little, little, little wins like that to where it's working because the data is showing me it's working. It's showing me that it that it's working. So that kept me going, and you know, even now, like it 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 has its seasons and it has its ups and down because um, you know I think that you know some people this is a part of their life and some people it's a luxury for them. Right. You know. So, um, again, like I said, it's just, it, 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 you know, went back to the, okay, well, how can I make five ways off of being an esthetician? What's five ways that I can, I can make revenue? Because again, don't single yourself out. Man, <laughs> this is dope. Cause I mean, you really shed a lot of light on everything that I w really wanted to have this conversation with you about. And really for someone that's, um, young lady, um, even maybe a male that's stepping in um, your same footsteps um, and just wondering how they can go by and, and, and create their self in this, in this industry, the way that you did, you, you, you sharing a lot of information and I appreciate that. And I also was going to ask you the same question, like how should someone like, like yourself in the beginning, what avenues, what, situations, how, what platforms should they place themselves in to kind of like start developing themselves? And I, I know you said the five steps, that's, that's good. And, and I think that's very pinpoint to, you know, you should write everything out of what you want to see yourself and how you see yourself within a month or, or a year or two years and stuff like that. And that, that's dope. Like what other information would you give someone that's trying to, you know, line themselves up in your industry? Well, I think that we've all um, have seen successful businesses, whether we've, you know, seen it in the news, um, worked for one, know someone. We all have experienced a business that is successful but unorganized. <laughs> yeah. And I think that just comes down to the individual, you know? I'm not saying that unorganization, being unorganized, you will not have a successful business. That's not what I'm saying. I've worked for very unorganized businesses. I, I know very unorganized people <laughs> who businesses are unorganized. And I think that it just really comes down to, you know, the representation and, and the type of business that you want to be. But we do know that you're more likely to be successful when you're organized mm -hmm. you're more likely to be successful when you're organized so part of me getting structured and getting organized and 
you know, my perseverance is um, writing things down. I write down my short-term goals. I write down my long-term goals. I cross them out. I put a date when I don't reach when I don't reach them. I I I I ask myself why did I not reach it, um, and I carry them over to the next month. Um, and that's really helped me get organized and really just hold myself accountable for the year hold myself accountable because like this year, the whole year went by and a lot of good things have happened. But even with the good things, we, we, were, we were blocked. You know, we couldn't do everything that we wanted to do. And so for the people that didn't have the not so good things that happened, you know, there might be, it's many reasons why. Maybe, maybe they just feel like because they've been stuck in the house that they're not being productive or being successful because they're stuck in the house and that's not true you know you can be especially when you're an entrepreneur and you're and you have your own business you know so um writing things down it really helps i feel you be accountable um for your own um your own you know objectives and and your own failures you know and and also i think that writing it down it lets you prioritize, right? And push things back. And I have rewritten my business about four times. Definitely have. And to. that's because now I have the friends that like they're quiet, chilling. And then all of a sudden they come, they drop this amazing web, this amazing product in business. Yeah. Because they were writing it down. Mm -hmm. And they were getting all of the assets together that they needed, which I did too, but I, 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 I'm, I, now I do it that way. I, I, you know, I use Excel. I mean, I operate it just like, I want to, I want to, you know, I, I, I don't want to have to work for anyone in five years, mm -hmm. you know, another realistic goal, you know, um, you know, I, you know, for me, everyone, everyone's life is different, but my five-year goal, you know, right now is in five years, which is not a long time to, you know, not have to work for myself. And I can see, I never in my life was like the type of person, like, I want to be a millionaire. I've never said that till this year. And it's not that I want to be one. I can see myself making a million dollars. That's what I see. Whether I become a millionaire or not, I'm going to still be happy. I'm going to still be, you know, blessed, fulfilled. Yeah. But now I see, because I set up these five ways and I just see the, 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 uh, the power of wholesale and retail and all these different, you know, industries and, and tools available to us. And I'm like, okay, maybe I can become a millionaire. I'm like, wait a minute, if I focus and if I continue at it. So I thought that that was kind of funny too, because that just goes to show, I mean, when I started, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to work at like the Beverly Hills Hotel in the spa. I'm going to be booked all day with the rich people. <laughs> They're going to tip me like 80 bucks <laughs> on top of what I make. And guess what? I did that. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to be working this hard and giving this, this, these people all my money when I can go do my own facials. Yeah. So the, the, my point is that, like, even in the story that I've just shown you, like, shared with you, you know, like, I didn't even know where I was at in my life. Some people know where I was at, which I don't share that story, which one day I might, like, be like, here's what I was doing. But yeah. it's funny, like, if you know me, then you know, you know, but... I was at this point in my life where I was like, oh, yeah, like, this is the life right now, to where someone said something that was not my idea, to where I fell in love with it, right, to then where I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, like, my plans for it after that were like, yeah, I'm going to work in Beverly Hills. I did that, and that's where, like, the entrepreneurship started kicking in. Correct. When I was like... I'm not going to work eight hours a day 
and do eight facials or eight treatments back to back and not be able to talk skin with these people, you know, whatever, whatever wasn't aligned with me, you know, whatever changes I wanted. And that's when it clicked in like, oh, and then I was like, wait, I don't have money. So, and then to where now, you know, to saying, oh, I'll never be a millionaire to where now I'm like, now I kind of see myself as the ability to do it. And now here I am six years later from that, that point where the person came to me and told me, you should do this. And um, I have an amazing career with, the, with a great company that I love and I, and I do what I love. And I feel like they're, you know, I'm learning a lot from them on the back end and in our industry and just adding more to my, my expertise and my experience, you know? Um, and, um, you know, they're giving me, you know, the tools to be, um, this professional that I see myself being because you know we don't become a, it takes years to become an expert you're still a beginner yeah you know what I mean like Kobe was a, a expert you know what I mean like he was playing basketball for 18 years of his life well I mean played just alone you know been playing his whole life he's an expert at the game he right. knows what he's talking about you know when he's giving you advice and coaching you you know I feel like that's what she was giving out within our, our conversation. Um, how does law attraction stand for you and what do you take out of it the most to keep yourself? Well, up? I try to not let my personal life get involved with my career. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, we still have to, we still have to keep it pushing. And so I try to really separate the two and keep my mind like focused on, you know, I always try to refocus myself. I always try to refocus myself. And, you know, me personally, I'm really hard on myself too. Um, and that's just something that like, like I said, I always, I like to hold myself accountable, you know, for my own mistakes and, 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 um, or if I don't, you know, deliver as I, as I felt that I should, you know? Um, so I, I do believe in positive affirmations and positive thinking and prayer. Um, I think that that is huge because your thoughts become reality. And a lot of times where, you know, you are your biggest competition, right? Um, at, at my job right now, that's one of our like five like goals or like standards, right? Mm -hmm. And that's so true. You are your biggest competition. Um, and secondly, um, you know, I believe that sometimes we are our biggest problem. The way that you think is your problem. And there's really not a problem. The problem is the way that you're thinking. The problem is saying, making excuses. The problem is saying, oh, I'll never be able to design a wedding dress like that. Did you try it? <laughs> exactly. Did you try it or are you just saying that you can't? Or why does it have to be like that? Why don't you do it the way that your artisticness lets you do it? And really, there's, sometimes there's not a problem. And I also believe that when we do the right thing, then good things will happen. And again, when you, when you do the right thing and you do what's right and, and you use your gifts, then they are going to naturally, right, align and you're going to feel better. Like, you know, I, I know, I know that like, like, you know, and this is materialistic, but you know, like we've all probably like probably got a new car and like was like, man, that other car, and you just that that feeling where you're like, cool, I got my car, like now I have reliable transportation, like I don't gotta worry about getting flat tires, I don't gotta worry about nothing, like everything good, and you feel better, you know what I mean? You're like your your problem, like you may still have all your other problems, but you're just like, okay, like I can 
get to point A to point B to do what I want to do, you know? Um, so I feel like, you know, baby steps is important, especially when you don't have resources. Like I said, you know, however you're going about your business, if you're eating alone, if you're doing it yourself, however, I mean, duh, like, how is it going to go happen overnight? You ain't even got the money for it to happen overnight. That doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So I think baby steps, you know, and again, like measuring, find other ways to measure your results. And again, I come from, you know, a corporate world. So my mind thinks like logistically anyway, and not everyone, we all think different, but I feel like I said, I feel like, you know, the organization and, and, and writing it down and having a vision, I feel like you're a lot more likely to get the results that you want when you do that. And um, you'll deal with those, those business struggles and you'll deal with the, all of the stuff that you think matters and it doesn't, you know, because, you know, a lot of people have their businesses for different reasons, you know, um, it could just because it's a coffee shop, it doesn't mean the person likes coffee. Maybe they grew up in a small town with a coffee shop on the corner and they just want a place where people can mingle and unite. And that's what drives them. You understand what I'm saying? And, and that's why they're, why they love what they do and why their business is so successful because they truly love what they do. So not everyone is going to feel that way. That's just the reality. Not everyone is going to, you know, be, you know, you know, we're, there's always going to be somebody that with more than you, there's always going to be somebody that's doing better than you. There's always going to, there's always going to be that somebody. That's life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's life. Like they, you're not supposed to look at them and say, oh, they're doing better than me. I can't do it. Oh, what am I doing wrong? Don't doubt yourself. Look at, you know, look and get inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, look and get, in, get <laughs> inspired. Yeah. And, yeah. and for me, I don't watch a lot of people. Yeah. So, like, it, I don't care who you are. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care who you are. Like, I, you know, I'm my biggest competition. That's the only reason why, like right now, you know, I'm going through that. I'm feeling the, a shift of refocusedness because I'm trying to get to that. I'm trying to quit having to work for other people in the next five years or sooner, no later than I'm trying to, I saw how I might be able to be, make a million, which isn't a lot of money, but it's a lot of money coming from a, a, a middle class woman you know what i mean a, a person that you know just goes to work and you know what i mean so um so my my focusness has recently you know shifted and like in my head i'm on my grind now am i booked every day not always so it's like i still feel like i'm grinding though because on the back end i'm doing other things Exactly. Because one day, one day the ball's gonna drop, you guys. One day your your hard work is gonna pay off. When I mean, I don't know. Like you know, I base like I, I base a lot of the wins and the what ifs on on the spiritual okay. aspect. So I think that you know that also gives me a different way of thinking as well. Um, but again, you know, you just, you got to believe that as long as you're doing the work, you know, God, your universe, um, I, I believe everything will align. Man, this is dope. I want to thank you for taking your time out. I, I, you know, you could have been anywhere else in the world right now, but you, you tuned in with me, you know, talk your 
fashion shit, but we're going to also put this on my talk, your barber shit platform as well, because you, you get on a lot of information I want to share with a lot of people. And I just want to say, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for... Now, my pleasure. Anything for you, boo. Anything. <laughs> Every time you call me, I'm like, yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. No, yep. Not- you know, and it's like... From the beginning to now, man, I can always count on you. And I just want to say thank you. You've always been a shining light, and I appreciate that. And I want people to know how to reach you, how to connect with you, uh, check out your platform as far as your skincare, and, like, tell tell them all that information right now. Yeah, so um, all of my social media, media handles is Rue Beauty, and that's beauty in French. So that's R-O-U-X-B-E-A-U-T-E. Um, and that's my Instagram and my Facebook. And my website is uh, ruebeautybyerica.com. Spell it real quick. <laughs> um, R-O-U-X-B-E-A-U-T-E-B-Y-E-R-I-C-A E-R-I-C-A dot com. And um, if anyone needs any, I do free skin consultations. If you need an um, assessment of your skin or you want to talk about some of your goals or your concerns, um, I'm doing that in person and I, I do a virtual now, which has been a, a shift and really dope with um, COVID, right? A, 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 a new adaptment. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm in West Hollywood, California. And, and like I said earlier, um, you no, know, I think the one thing I love about um, my treatments is that they smell amazing. <laughs> Everything just smells really, really good. And it's, you know, real, it's not artificial fragrances or perfumes. And, and then I think that, you know, people, I always say facials are workouts for your skin. You know, you come every four to six weeks, whether you have concerns or not. Um, we age. Um, and, you know, our skin is, um, you know, in the environment all day and around all types of germs and bacteria. And, and it's an organ and it's our biggest organ. So we want to protect it and take care of it. And so um, that's what facials are for. They're for everyone and anyone that just wants to maintain their maintain their complexion and age gracefully and look and feel their best. And even those that have secondary concerns that are, you know, um, more deeper like acne you know there's there's things that you can do to help your skin you know um our children hormonal acne and teenage acne you know that that's that's embarrassing and a hard time for kids in their life so i like to help people with all that yeah you guys can check me out on that. I, can, I can actually um step into that 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 room with you and say yeah i mean i I was blessed to, you know, get my skin taken care of by you, and it came out fabulous. Everybody, like, <laughs> <laughs> like what you do to your skin, right? Yeah, like what you do to your skin. Yeah, and then the uh, the beard oil, man. Yeah, oh yeah, the beard oil. Yeah. You're using it in your business, right? Um, I, I have. I mean, yours. I keep to myself. But, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just want people to be like, "Oh, that smells good." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, this is where I got it from." But I don't, uh, I don't really, you know, let too much people know about my secret sauces. So, right. All your, all your, all your man secrets, right? No, and that's another thing. Like men, like you know, groom male grooming is for you guys too. Like I feel like facials. Like, you remember a long time ago when men just started getting pedicures? Yeah. And, like, before, you couldn't catch a man in a nail shop. Right. And he definitely wasn't going to let you touch his toes. Yeah, exactly. And then men, now, men get manicures. Like, they say it. Like, oh, I'm getting my nails done. Yeah. And be coming out with, you know, because they just want their nail file. Because, you know, most men have ugly feet. No, I'm just kidding. But y'all were like, we need some help, you know? So, yeah. Like, it's the same thing. It's the same type of gratification yeah. and, like, in feeling. And I don't think that people realize the health benefits and the long-term benefits of skincare until they um, they are introduced to it and experience it. Yeah. 
Do you have any of your items close by? You can kind of like show them on the video and kind of talk about a couple of them. Um, yeah, I can go get some real quick. Yeah, go do that. Yeah, okay, let me go grab uh, some of my favorites real. Uh, so, um, some of my favorite items. So it's not just skincare, it's like um, wellness, body, bath stuff. So uh, one of my favorite right now, this is um, this is a product, it's called Bikini Bottom. And this is for ingrown hairs. So I think that like commercial and drugstore, we've all heard of like skin type, right? Um, this is similar to that same purpose to prevent ingrown hairs and discoloration, um, aside from the name saying bikini, but for the anywhere that you have hair um, coming from and you can get ingrowns. So I love this one. Um, it has um, licorice root extract in it. It has tea tree, turmeric, right? Um, which are all of like the clarifying ingredients in it. And it just helps improve the skin texture and prevent ingrowns and discoloration pretty much anywhere. Um, it's great result. Another one of my favorite things that uh, I've been loving, my clients have been loving, this is a Shiki foot um, exfoliating foot mask. Okay. So these are like little foot booties. And they're saturated in a bunch of alpha hydroxy acid. It's like a, a chemical peel for your feet. Okay. Um, you put them on for like an hour. And in about three to four days, it is like a nightmare. I mean, I've seen it all. I've had grown women send me pictures of their feet, and I thought it was like a dinosaur. I'm like, oh, you're half dinosaur or something like what is all that? Yeah. It removes all the callus, all the dead skin cells. Your feet are going to be brighter, brighter, smoother. It gets all that toe jam out. Um, they're perfect um, for like travel, in between petties, manis, and just to do monthly for your foot. Um, another one of my favorite products right now, um, I love aromatherapy. This is a shower, um, a shower mist from Euro Spa. So this is eucalyptus and lavender. So you know when you like walk in a spa and it always smells like yeah, yeah. Uh, spearminty and stuff like that? Well, this is what that is. Uh, you steam your shower and you just spray a couple of sprays in it. Um, these are the simple type things that can just really like go a long way in your life. If you're stressed out, just the, the aromatherapy um, is so healing to our mind, you know what I mean, and in our, in our, our, in our soul, just inhaling, and sometimes just taking deep breaths, and taking a hot night shower or a bath can really take a lot of stress off, um, so I felt like this was, like, something that I just had to share with everyone, because, man, my bath, it's like, I'm, it's like I'm in Thailand, you know, I turned my whole bathroom into, like, an oasis, I'm not, I don't just take any bath. I use all these steps, and I just wanted to share that with everyone. Um, and then this is the beard oil. Oh, that's not it. Sorry, I got the wrong one. Um, and then lastly, one of my newest products that I got, this is for the ladies. Um, this is a um, liquid, like, lip highlighter okay. from um, Cosmetics, which is a skincare line. And this is a beautiful, like translucent, really fun um, lip balm, but it's really hydrating and moisturizing. So winter's coming, um, our lips, we put a lot of foreign objects into our mouth. You know, we eat, um, we put a lot of spicy food and heat, and our lips don't have any moisture in that area. So they age and they get really dry and cracky. So uh, this is something that is for the ladies that men can do it too if they want, but um, that I just think it's so beautiful, the packaging, and also uh, really effective and moisturizing. So yeah, those are some of my products of many, and there's a full skin catalog online. And again, if anyone ever needs help doing anything, they can send an email and um, we can go over the products and, and do the virtual consultations where I can look at your skin. Like, there's so many tools that um, I want to provide to help everyone, right? Which is, which is 
the cool thing about being a small business. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you again, like I said, and that was dope. I like the the tutorial, like you showing everybody, you know, your products and, and there was some dope stuff in there. Um, do you have any like uh, packaging, like Christmas deals coming up? Like we definitely. Yeah. So um, glad you brought that up. Yeah, I do. Um, I do these um, handmade um, beauty boxes. They're made with love by me and basically like some of the goodies that I just showed you, I include them. And I just make these, you know, uh, skin and um, wellness and body baskets. Um, all of the items are professional products. So um, they're effective and uh, free of dirty chemicals and ingredients um, and mostly botanical and plant-based. So they all are really um, have a nice aromatherapy to them or they all really smell and feel good and I make those every year so they'll be posted on the website and um, they'll be posted um, I'll start posting them in, in on Instagram and stuff around like um, Thanksgiving okay yeah oh yeah so yeah I'll definitely um, put out the word and um, you know we're gonna shop this video around all the way through Chris to Christmas and everything <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah um i want to say thank you again for stepping up and you know sharing your experience and this is not a one-time thing so whenever you got something coming up and you just want to share it and you want to you know allow me to be one of you know the people to you know have this sit down with you and you know we can do what we got to do and you know keep this going so i want to thank now, you well, kudos to you on the the dope idea yeah. And, you know, keeping us connected and, you know, like, these are the things that, these are the small details in your business that work, like connecting with other people, you know, doing collaborations like this and talking. And so, so I love it. I'm proud of you. And yeah, it was, it was a pleasure. All right. So, um, we go on to end this but it's not over. It's never going to be over. And I, like I said, let's let's keep it pushing. I'm going to support you like you supported me. And we're going to keep doing what we got to do. 